finally we port a P73 Type R intake manifold because the last video that we did about this was about two years ago here. And yes, we usually port the Type R manifold almost every month for lots of customers, but we don't never really have the time to shoot a video for it. But now we made sure we had time to make this content. Here it is, all chopped up, and let's look at it close. Yes. Casting is very stock, untouched. We take you along from the beginning with the carbide first, and of course until we all finish it up like this, and of course talk about the dyno sheets, the effects on the dyno and the power. So yep, this one is just for you. <laughs> First things first, here's our new Facebook page because I had to make a new one because with a personal Facebook contact, I lost control of the old one. Here we got a prices of head porting, engine build, even cam TV and AC tuning, everything is there. Alright. And yes, you can see we post like all the stuff. Like for example, when we went to the dyno, we posted it there. And all the intake tests, the if the reason it all started on the post there became a discussion on the comments. So we it, it ended up into being a good test, right? So you gotta check it out, like and follow. And of course, if you don't have Facebook, I got my Instagram. I'm using it as SRD. So here you can see I I post updates on all the work that we do. Yep. Check it out, I'm all there on both. And of course, we also have TikTok. So if you're into short form content, we got some good stuff there too. So much the same. I handle all three platforms. So like and follow, link in the description, okay? So here, the intake manifold came from New Zealand. Yes, a fellow there had wanted us to port the head. So here we chopped it open. Let me show you. The first crack on it. So all sewed up all the way through. Yeah. As you can see, it's all stock. And actually, the interesting part is, look, the Honda Type R casting is really, really clean, right? And look, the entry is all round, rounded up, so we know that's how efficient it is. But of course, there's tons of room to, for improvements. Yep, let's take a photo of that and this before we touch it. Now here we start with the carbide, all right? I usually start here on the sides because then this way it lets you feel the intake like the lower half is skewed to the left and the upper half is more to the right so you, you can equalize that by doing so so this is my way others do uh, the other way or they do their own so hey all I can say is you do you I do this all right so here it is initial shaping to infuse proper taper let me Show you close. There, we flared it up a bit now on the entry. So now we keep going to infuse more taper, but we first we clip it on the vise there to start on the roof. Here it is. Now we're working on the roof. Yep, let me show you. All right, I, I don't usually take this long to the video on this section because look, if you look at it, I poured it that way, right? And the clip is here. So I get to hit the phone every time I port. So I usually don't record on this angle. That, that That's the reason, all right? So back to the normal pattern. Here, as you notice, I lubricate the carbide with this, with this, with mineral spirits and ATF, mainly because other people would say they don't, you don't need to. We, yeah, we don't need to. But I've noticed that the, every time you lubricate the carbide, you get to run the carbide without much pressure, you know? You just so run your hands through it softly and still eats up good amount. That lets you do it consistently, you know, without unwanted deeper cuts or burrs and all that. So that's why I always will lubricate whenever we're trying to remove a lot of material. This way, we, you know, we remove it like with a consistent without so much bumps. As you can see, the carb, the fresh cut of the carbide is looking really good, right? Yes, because it's also because, you know, we lubricate the carbide every, every time we do a certain pass on each runner. So that's really clean and good. All right, let's clip it again. Now we start with 80 grit. On the same thing on the sides, so I can still feel the bumps and ridges, so we try to eliminate it. 
And as you notice, I spray a bit of um, ethyl alcohol with soapy water mix. Is to really get a good texture finish and also give this it all look good. The product at the end stage is very good. Of course, before we continue, hit the like button. This way, it gives the algorithm notification that the video has more activities. And the more activity it gets, the algorithm will spread it out to a wider audience. It helps me and the child so much. And if you noticed, our videos now compared to two years ago, we have a bunch of dino tests now. It's getting better. And of course, as the child grows better, bigger you guys are the one who's going to be benefiting because we're going to keep sharing all the good stuff for you guys and subscribe of course if you haven't this so you can check out all the good stuff and for the hardcore we got over 19 videos of ultra technical stuff it'll get boring to the general audience but for the hardcore guys this is just perfect for them we got the dino tune everything is there so hey you can be a member the top member and the gold member also have the best stuff there so hey i'll see you there all right here we are now, we clean it up. Now this is the initial, you know, the first stage where we're not even halfway through, but if you can see the opening is getting good now. Yep. We just had to clean it up just to be able to show you guys better because you know, from the porting bench, it's too crusty and too dusty. So we can't really see everything good. Yes, but now it's clean. All right, now let's head back to the porting staging. The party station, sorry. All right, here we are now. So we clean it up, clip the phone. We continue firing it up. Now here it is. We start with the carbide once again after, you know, we smoothed it out in 80 grit, but now we go back with the carbide because we can see the changes that we need to do. So yep, we keep going. I mean, after you go with the 80 grit, you suddenly start seeing or feeling the certain bumps and you would need a carbide to go back to it to do, you know, to be more time efficient and then finally go back to the 80 grit once again so we go back and forth sometimes just to get the necessary consistency that we want or shoot for and you can see now we're starting to get there yep it's starting to look really really good the taper is starting to actually be excellent you know just the way i like it and so here we are we go back to 80 grit now we spray some blue yes because we already we got to you know contour good enough with a carbide after the 80 grit we go with the carbide now we're back in the 80 grit just to finish it off finally you know before we even go to 120 grit you know we make sure it's really smooth to the touch as far as the 80 grit will take us and you can see it's starting to look really really good right oh yeah all right here let me unclip the phone to show you closer Oh, would you look at that? It's starting to look good, right? Of course, the flare, the, this flared section is still carbide, but you know, the runner, the in, initial entry or the initial two inches of the runner is tapering really, really good. So that will, be, that will serve as a guide to the flared entry and of course to the rest of the runners, all right? So now we continue with 80 grit. We keep continuing this all the way until we're more than halfway through the runners. And also, because we keep going with the 80 grit, we start to get the finish even smoother, even better than usual. And that's all just 80 grit, you know? This way, when you go to 120 grit, the finish is just extra, extra nice. Yes. Now we'll wash this up and show you guys first. Oh, would you look at that? It looks really, really clean and good, right? But of course, the flared section, the entry is not yet, you know, not yet totally smoothed out. But basically, we're just showing you how it looks now initially before we, you know, smooth out the contours. And look at this side here. Oh, yeah. Starting to look really, really good. Let's look at this area again once again. Yep. It's just the way I like it. And this is going to be really, really good. It's going to be more efficient than the stock. We're going to make good power all throughout even at the top end yep let's look at it closer once again look at that there's a bunch of velocity stacks right there right oh yes this is gonna pull good airspeed that will make good torque and power up top all right let's go back to the pointing bench 
here we are we're still with 80 grit we spray some lube some more but you can see we're trying to expand it all the way through from the entry all the way in into two inches into the runner as you can see the flare is starting to look good right yep continue for the rest of the runners as initially you didn't notice that it was tapered all the way good from the entry right but they I got used to this and I know the steps that I do it leads to, to alter the good tapered entry into the runners consistently you know this by doing this steps like this it gives me really really good consistency yep runner number four now starting to look really really good and re excellent right yes now here we are let me show you close Oh, you look at that. That is still 80 grit, guys. Yep. Now we continue, but this time with 120 grit. As you can see, it's starting to get lighter, right? That's, that's actually because it's 120 grit, it's a lot smoother. But it's still kind of dull, not, not really ultra shiny, but smooth. Like a dull finish, that's good. Continue this with the rest of the runners. Now we're done with all of it. Oh, look at that. Yes. Of course, we need to go some more. We have to go all the way through the runners and also all the way to the other side so we could keep good going. And of course, the phone cut off, but here it is. It didn't get to record earlier, but here it is. We flared it up really, really good, right? Now we're gonna do the rest on the other side and of course wash it up and take it to the workbench. Here it is. Oh, would you look at that? Looks really, really good. Now it's all the way through. Yes, we left the last half inch on the head flange untouched. This way it's, you know, the owner can, you know, port match it easily to, to his head. Oh, look at that. I see a velocity stack under the runner number one, right? Oh yeah, well, all four of them are like a velocity stack now. Let's turn this like this. Wait, let me show you. The reason why we cut the flange there, because look, you get a part of the flare in here is good, right? And others would say, no, you don't need to cut it. You can just port it uh, this way. And then all, the rest is on the other way. But, you know, you do you, I do this way. You know, but hey, to the guys buying manifolds like that, run your hand here on the on the entry to the runner number four. And you'll see, you'll feel something there if the flange is not cut. So, right, but I'm not, you know, this is not an argument. You're doing that way, I do this way. So, hey, we're all good. All right, here it is. Oh, look at that. The runner entry is looking really good, clean and consistent, right? Yep. Now, let's see the pictures of before and after. Initially, shaping. Here it is, and then the finished, well, almost finished. Now it's all done, right? Back again here initially, then the initial carbide halfway through. Yes, and all done. Look, it looks really good here also. Yep. Yes, oh, it looks really, really good, right? Yep, this is gonna be performing really good. This is our latest iteration or latest version. And of course, if you guys remember this, engine here the b16a it was severely undercapped because it just ran it archives which is like a gsr but look especially at 85 all the way to 95 the power plateaus right so that's really good that's the manifold and here the b18 that we did years ago 2011 almost 10,000. of course done by illegal down south zef runs this black domani the one with quinn you know harley quinn he runs a B20 VTEC with just a Gen 1 YCP, so that's barely 12 is to 1 compression, S2, S2 cams. His four door runs around 13.4, actually 13.3, low 13s on street tires. Tell me a B20 VTEC that's a four door that runs that fast, right? That's really good for just a simple setup. So now we bolt this all together. Let me show you how Ed Mel, the machine shop, welds this for us. Right, let me just tighten this now. All right, so Edmel actually here you see, not ported all the way through the flange. This way, the owner can port match it. The weld starts from there, go all the way around here, and of course they stop just right before the throttle. 
And once that's fully welded, and you know the manifold settles in, then they remove the throttle, then they can weld the rest. This way, it minimizes wear warping. And of course, the welds, you have to just clean it off with an end mill, so that'll be all good. And as soon as this manifold gets fully welded and done, we'll always post it on the page. So you gotta like and follow the page, you guys. And of course, all the other good stuff, you can always just click it over here.